Welcome back, everybody. Today I'm doing my options weekly review. And I think it was a pretty good week, despite all the choppiness that was in the market. And that's because I took advantage of a couple of opportunities I saw and pulled in some nice realized gains. So first off, just looking at the daily close snapshots, decided to put them all in one screenshot here for you. On Monday, uh, I was up 3,800 and I realized a little over 4,000. Tuesday, another green day, up 2,000. Wednesday, up 800. Thursday, down 4,000, but still realized another $687. And then Friday, we finished in the green, although at one point I think this was down about 500 during the day. And I also realized another $607 in income. So overall, a pretty good week to start off with. And then I was looking at my year-to-date benchmarks from Interactive Broker. They have this little report you put on. And I just thought it was pretty interesting that I'm up 7.29% while SPY is down 2.2%. So basically, it's almost a, I'm almost beating SPY by 10% right now. And we're just getting started in the, in the year. So that's pretty crazy. And I'm actually kind of proud of it. I'm not going to lie. Like, that's some insane numbers. <laughs> uh Looking at the tracker sheet, we have uh, we finished Friday at 19800 Year-to-date total change is almost 13000 uh, The weekly change, 3700 uh, Premium cooking, I don't really have much premium on right now. I have a couple positions that are in the money that I have to kind of see what I want to do with those first because they're eating up a lot of uh, uh, no notional value. If I go to the diversification spot here, you can see I have about 7,200 in risk on the table for option plays that are sitting out there right now. And I said I want to kind of play with as though I had a 64K account. So I'm a little over where I would want to be. But if you look, I don't really have that many positions on. And I do have a couple Devil puts that I hope to get assigned because I want more shares. Uh, I was actually joking with somebody that, I, you know, I switched to this passive income ETF on just in time to see the slow bleed because... It seems like all those long positions are the things holding me back while my options trading has just gone through the roof. Like it's been kind of kind of crazy, I guess. Like my, my options are trying to keep my portfolio afloat, I guess. Uh the other thing to look at, I guess, would be the quick quick overview here. I mean, I've I've been really bad about like tracking like dividends before. I might have to go back through and see all the dividends I got for twenty twenty one and update that, but in terms of realized premium, again, January off to an insane start. Uh, maybe I'll even be able to beat last January, but we'll find out. You only have 2,200 cooking right now, and most of that's actually in the money. So uh, we'll have to see how that plays out. Uh, overall, since I've been doing options, I've realized 97000 in profit from just option income. So that's... Again, pretty darn cool. Uh, let's go ahead and check out my trades, and we'll do it from the brokerage. Let me pull it up here. I oh, it looks like we went up after hours too. Uh, trade log. Last five days. So on Monday, Amazon was beat down. Like I was set. I was already planning to do like a bull zebra on it and it went down even more to make my entry that much better. So I ended up putting on a couple bull zebras on it and originally I was going to target like a 20k profit but Amazon dipped even further than I thought and so when it got to a profit and I checked during lunch I said you know what I'm just going to take this $4,000 gain call it a day. Had I never looked at the account again, I would have realized over $20,000 in one day. And had I not had a limit order to begin with at all, like this position would have became like 60000 Like uh, Never before has a $4,000 gain felt like a $50,000 loss, but that's kind of what it felt like. Because like Amazon, like my targets were right, just I didn't have the cojones to stick with it and let it stay on. Because honestly... This was a pretty big amount of money here. So about $20,000 to secure those two contracts. Another 12000 So this, this was a huge position. About 30000 or a little bit less than that. And made 4000 off of it overall. Which is about a 10% return on 
everything that was in that trade. And that's all in one day. Like, that's awesome. Uh, QYLD, little dividend drip. I think that's the first time QYLD has dripped for me. So that's neat. On Tuesday, this is after the market showed a little bit of strength. So I felt more confident putting the trades on. And I actually made a video that went out either Monday night or Tuesday morning talking about these trades. And I ended up putting all three of them on. So we had, oh, the 6750 put. And all three of these trades were profitable at like a 30% profit already. Like I should have probably closed some of these out. So that could have been a one day 30% profit on all of these. Uh, Beyond Meat, 45, super safe. I think Beyond Meat went down today and it doesn't even matter because I'm so far away from the money that I just know this one's just going to be cooking. I just had to take advantage of that VIX being up when we chose that. The IWM, this one was up quite a bit. Uh, we'll check in a little bit here. Actually, let's take a look. How's that guy doing right now? IW, um, we're still up 20% on that one, actually. I'm kind of surprised. I thought SPY went down a little bit, but I, I wasn't watching the market too closely today. Uh, go back to the trade logs. Sorry about that. Uh, Devo. So I decided to take that profit, put it right back into Devo. And so I sold some puts to buy more shares of Devo if, if it's under 38. And for that, I got a nice little credit and that will buy me like two and a half shares itself. So by using an option to get into the position, you get like a free share, like buy a hundred, get one free. It's kind of what I joke about. And then I put the rest of the profit just to buy the shares directly at 37.62. And then the following day, Tesla, I saw an opportunity to go uh, bear on it. And so I bought a deep in the money put to try to catch a small like 10 point move down and the volume decreased the uh the buying pressure came back and so i decided to close it out for a small gain like this was like a scratch at comparative like what i was hoping to get but the uh conditions changed while this trade was on so i took off the uh opportunity to get out with a profit and then wednesday i think this was yeah wednesday still uh spy I tried to play with some zero DTE contracts. You've seen me do this before. Uh, SPY is kind of neat. So at expiration, like once uh, the market closes, like SPY option contracts still trade for a little bit. Like you can still trade them. And this play, even though it's picking pennies up in front of like a semi truck or something, it should have been successful. But at the end, I like wanted to get out. I didn't want to be in the money on a bunch of puts on spy at this level because that would be a lot of cash to like outlay for it so i decided to close it like right before close and at that time like just the premium just shot up like the uh everyone was trying to close the cost of run-up of the option price and got filled at a like honestly honestly a pretty bad thing and then had i just waited 60 seconds after the bell like this position went down to four cents. So I could have still closed this out for a $60 profit overall if I'd just been patient. Like that's just, that's just the name of the game. Overall, like I risked, what was that, 600? Was this a, I think this was a $1 spread. So $600 to make 80 bucks. And it, it didn't pay off, obviously. So I gave back that gain from Tesla. I think I ended up with a $13 loss on the day in terms of realized premium. Uh, the following day, uh, Tesla was up pretty high. It was above 1100 and I saw a lot of selling pressure coming in, and the market looked like it's going to go down overall. So it was just a big snowstorm set to make Tesla go down. Decided to take advantage of that and put on a bear uh, zebra. And sure enough, Tesla like immediately shot down like 8 bucks. And I took that as a win and got out. Had I waited though, this is the day that Tesla shot down all the way to 1030. So this again, could have been a $7,000 gain. Like I'm getting the directions right and I'm just getting out too fast, but I'm fine with taking a nibble on these plays while I try to like work on my setups and learn how to manage these when I'm go trying to go in and out quickly. Uh, this is not the style I've been doing a lot of, so it's kind of hard to explain like what I'm seeing here, but uh, it's just been good so far. It's been working pretty well the last three weeks. And it's going to be one of those things that works until it doesn't. 
So hopefully I make enough to make up for the big loss that comes when I'm wrong. Because it's not a matter of if I'll be wrong, it's a matter of when I'll be wrong. And so far, like Tesla, like I think it now has jumped up to be my stock that I made the most money off of without ever owning a share. So Netflix just got bumped down to second place, unfortunately. So I'm sorry, Netflix. <laughs> uh, Friday, uh, Tesla was trading at 10... What was that? Like 10.30 when I put this on, I think it was, or 10.35. And so I decided to buy a deep in the money put uh, because I didn't want to do the Zebra. It was just going to cost a lot more to put on to get the same P&L that I was looking at. So like when the contract is very close to the last day of expiration or the last day of expiration itself, it seems like the Zebras just cost too much and you're better off just buying a deep in the money put or call to simulate owning or shorting 100 shares. So that's why you see me switch back to just buying a put instead of doing like a Zebra because it was a lot cheaper to put on that position rather than do the zebra, the same p &L. Like, <clears throat> uh, one thing I would also say is that if you're gonna be doing these quick uh, day trading, swing trades, whatever you wanna call them, where you're just looking for it to make a quick buck based off of, like the price movement of the stock, like I would say don't buy at the money puts and calls because if you get a dollar movement in your direction, you at most make 50 cents and you have so much extrinsic value burning against you as well. Whereas if you buy a deep in the money put or call, the extrinsic value is less. So this position, there's only $120 of extrinsic value on this position. And I wasn't planning to stay on it long, so I didn't think it was going to be decaying too much. But if all that had to be decayed, like all that's made up in a $1.20 movement in the stock. So like the extrinsic value, if I'm right in my direction, that's going to be paid off at expiration if I'm right in my direction anyway. But if you bought it like a, 10.30, when I was trading at 10.30, you would have paid 2000 for that. So you need like a $22 move in your direction to make a profit. So there's something to think about if you are going to go for these strikes and use options to do it. Like think about doing deep in the money positions. Sure, it costs more money to do, but it just brings your break even so much closer and you need a smaller movement in your favor to do it. And I think that's basically what's been helping me with all these like quick trades you've been seeing me do lately like the zebras you just need a dollar movement in your direction to make a hundred bucks uh these deep in the money puts and calls you see me doing i just need a dollar or two in movement in my direction to make a nice little profit don't have to worry about all the other greeks going crazy since i'm in and out of these pretty quickly whereas if i was at the money you know vega changing uh iv increasing or decrease it can really affect it so that's why you've been seeing me do a lot of deep in the money positions when I'm doing these aggressive gamble-esque plays, I guess you can call them. And so that's kind of what I've been doing. Uh, so next up, I guess, let's look at the positions that I have on right now. And you can see, like, all these uh, income funds I'm in are just sitting there with some nice negative balances. So good thing I bought all those, right? Uh not too worried about those. Like they were mostly just there for some dividends to basically be like something for my cash to be doing when I'm not using it. They collect a little dividend and hopefully they don't drop too much. And right now they are dropping, but eventually I'm sure they'll go up a little bit, especially Nusi. Like Nusi right now, they don't have many calls sold against their position. So if the market starts going up, it'll make this back up pretty quickly. We might see 2850 in no time kind of thing. Uh, Devo's only down 1%. Okay. I got Jeppy. I'm only down uh, three tenths of a percent on Jeppy. That's pretty cool. Uh, anyway, looking at the other positions, the Devil plays here. I don't care what the PL is. I took that premium, pocketed it, and I want the shares. So either give me the shares or I'll sell another put until I get the shares. That's kind of the idea there. So Devo doesn't matter to me. Uh, Microsoft, this is an in the money put right now. And the issue that I'm seeing is like the extrinsic value is just so high that I don't want to manage it because Theta should be burning it off. A small movement up and Microsoft would be out of the money. It's been out of the money like twice since it was down. At one point, this was showing negative $2,000 because it went down to, uh, I think it went down to like 304 at one point. And like the premium is just so high right now. IV is expanding. So I'm not too worried about this. Like, if Microsoft starts dripping below 300, then you might see me start sweating a little bullet. 
But this position has 34 days to, to play out, and there's no reason to be trying to manage it this early. So Microsoft, that's what's going on with that one. Uh, where's Chewy sitting? There's Chewy. So Chewy, this one on the other hand, obviously I was wrong. I thought 50 put would be safe. I think Chewy's down to what? 47 right now? Uh, let me take a look here. Where's Chewy? Oh, below 45. So $500 of intrinsic value. So there's only a buck 40 of extrinsic value. Like, I guess this could be worthy of working on because there's not too much extrinsic left. But I'm just going to let it play out for a little bit more. I mean, there's just so much time on it. And I think over the course of a month, uh, the market's going to be trending up again. We just got some volatility coming in here, which I actually like because it's going to be increasing premiums as people don't know what to do. <laughs> uh, looking at the other stuff, the plays I set for Tuesday, all are green still. Uh, Sends 250 put here is up 8%. That's kind of cute. Uh, down here, we still have my Hylian, uh combo order here that's down 16,000 or 1,600%. <laughs> uh, that's a big no looking number, but realize that what this position was doing was simulating owning, uh, what was it, 100 shares of stock or something like that. So my max loss is going to be at the put that I sold. So I sold the $12 put. So worst case scenario, I'm buying 100 shares at $12. So that's basically what that is. And the calls here might expire worthless, which means I lose uh, 660 bucks there. But if you look at the time, we have two years. So this is just something to sit there and that's kind of like a fun lottery ticket. Right now, it's not looking so fun, but we've got plenty of time for how they want to get this act together. And I think that wraps this up, guys. If you want to learn more about zebras because you've seen me use them a lot lately, you can go ahead and check out this video and see you guys tomorrow.